fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Quotation taken from the book of Psalms. I'm Julius Smetona. This is what Catholics believe. What, is, what do Catholics believe about atheism? Moreover, what is the nature of Catholic belief in God? What about Catholics and agnosticism? These are the subjects for our show today. We have with us again Father William Jenkins, pastor of St. Teresa's the Child Jesus Church in Parham, Ohio, and uh, principal of St. Gertrude's Academy in Cincinnati. Father, welcome to What Catholics Believe. Thank you, Julius. Father, uh, first question I'd like to ask is, is about the, the Catholic belief in God. Is it something which is just an intuition where some people may believe in God, so they choose to be Catholics, but others don't believe in God, and that's fine, and they choose not to be Catholics. Uh, or is it something of the, of the level and the order that, uh, well, the Catholic Church told us there is a God, so we believe in God? What is the, the, the relation between belief in God and Catholicism? The dogmatic teaching of the Roman Catholic Church is that the existence of God can be known by the light of human reason alone. In other words, that one does not have to believe there is a God, one can know there is a God, for a fact, just as one might know the existence of this statue, the existence of this table, or even the existence of you and me. Um, we can know there is a God because uh, we have the light of human reason. Father, we're living in uh, the age of empirical science. Uh, in what, what is this knowledge like? Is it demonstrated by a measuring device? Is it uh, demonstrated by something that we can touch, feel? I mean, how can we know there is God? Simply a matter of fact from the things that he created. So what you would say is that being that there is creation, creation presupposes a creator. Absolutely. Uh, my first objection, or what the atheist might say is, why? Why can't it always have been from all eternity? Well, first of all, let's define our terms. Okay. Can we do that? All right. I think there's a certain amount of confusion in the use of the term atheist and the use of the term agnostic. For example, what would you say would be the, the definition of an agnostic? What is agnostic? An agnostic is someone who would say that God is not knowable or that his demonst if he exists, his existence could not be demonstrated. And what about atheist? Atheism, atheist is one who Looks like we're switching roles, Father. Hey, well, well, we'll play it for a while. Atheism is one who would say there is no God. He would assert that there is no God, uh, dogmatically, if I may mix <laughs> metaphors. Okay, I'd like to take issue with okay. that a little bit. All right. Um, I have been confronted by people who call themselves atheists, who are not truly atheists, according to my definition. Well, let me uh, ask you, what's your definition of atheism? Right, I'd be glad to tell you. Okay. I was hoping you'd ask. <laughs> An atheist, in my book, is one who knows there is no God. If an agnostic is someone who does not know whether or not there is a God, he's in doubt, then an atheist must be someone who knows for a fact that there is no God. In other words, he must have somehow proven to himself that there is no God. And so, whenever I encounter an atheist, I'll ask the atheist to prove to me that there is no God. And the atheist will then generally hem and haw and finally come out with something like, well, I feel better when I think there is no God. Or the world would be so much nicer if there were no God. Or, well, look at the evil in the world. Uh, I really don't think there can be a God. What it comes down to is that the so-called atheists often are nothing but agnostics. Because as long as the atheists cannot prove there is no God, he must admit that there might be a God. And if he admits that there might possibly be a God, he's not an atheist, he's an agnostic. Mm -hmm. uh, an atheist is someone who puts himself in the very difficult position, the impossible position, of having some kind of rational proof that there is no God. That's impossible. Mm -hmm. That's impossible. Yeah, that yeah, strikes me that although there has never been a satisfactory proof for the non-existence of God, there have been many proofs for the existence of God. Uh, the uh, stipulation, however, is, is that most of the proofs for the existence of God have been challenged by uh, more modern philosophers, uh, say Immanuel Kant, uh, Hobbes, Barclay Hume, those people would challenge these proofs. Uh, you said the church says one can know 
the existence of God from reason. Uh, could you expand on that? Yes. Well, we have so many indications of the existence of a creator. Uh, first of all, the very existence of things that do not need to exist. There's such a thing as a necessary being, a being that of its very nature exists, and there is such a thing as a contingent being, that is a being that can exist, uh, but it doesn't have to. It comes into existence and then it disappears. Right? Everything we know in this world is a contingent being. It does not need to exist. It comes into being and it disappears, and the world just keeps going when on. When you say Creation it does not need going. to exist, what do you mean it's a necessary being? I mean, of its very nature. It doesn't exist simply by its very nature. Mm -hmm. It is a nature that is given to it. Uh, it is something that depends upon something else. Everything in existence that we know of depends upon something else for its existence. Mm -hmm. Now, at the bottom of it all, there must be some necessary being who simply exists because it is of his very nature to exist. And that we consider God. Uh, it Why? reminds me of a, of a story of a uh, scientist who said he had a, uh, an elderly lady come into one of his classes as he was talking about the, the foundation of the world and where the world came from. And the little lady raised her hand and said that actually the world is sitting on a turtle, on the back of a turtle. And then he thought he would play along and said, and what is that turtle standing on? And she said, well, that's standing on the back of another turtle. And so he said, and what about that turtle? Where is that turtle standing? And she said, well, that's obviously on the back of another turtle. And he started asking, well, what about, and she cut him off and said, now hold it, Sonny, save your breath. It's turtles all the way down. There has to be a foundation for what we see. You cannot have an infinite series of contingent or dependent beings, each depending upon the other. There has to be some bedrock. That's common sense. Oh, you yeah. don't have to prove the principle. There is common sense there. But not only that, you can prove it from the nature of the things that are. Scientists talk about laws and principles. Where did those laws and principles come from? There has to be intelligence. We see in the world order. The disorder in the world is generally the result of human beings. But wherever you abstract from human beings and their influence in the world, you see a very definite order. That order can only be the product of mind. And the order is so fabulous that it can only be the product of an infinite mind, which is God. My, uh, my question to you is, and this is the same question, I, I have objection I've seen raised by who, uh, those who have challenged these proofs. You said that there has to be a necessary being. Why can't this chain of contingent events go back all time? And you say, well, common sense. Well, that doesn't sound very convincing to me. Why can't things have just gone on indefinitely and never started? And never had a beginning. Right. A series of contingent things that never had a beginning because it's nonsense. Mm -hmm. Because it's total nonsense. Look, even the scientists today talk about things, the universe having had a beginning. Mm -hmm. They recognize the, the, the nonsensical nature of saying that there was simply no beginning for this world. This world is a contingent world that does not exist of its very nature. Things are constantly changing. They're changing in an orderly fashion. Mm -hmm. Even the scientists today point back to some beginning from which the present order came. Um, it is not the scientists, by the way, who are the atheists. It is the philosophers who take the conclusions of science and then twist them and mold them to fit their own philosophical ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't find too many scientists who are true atheists. Mm -hmm. um, you can also find the existence of God in uh, the image of God in man. Uh, the fact that we are totally unique in all of creation. Uh, if you saw a dog, for example, to get down to, to the nitty-gritty here, if you saw a dog who kept a calendar on the inside of his doghouse and marked out his social events for the following week or the following month, you would find that very peculiar. In fact, things like that occur only in cartoons, and we find them funny because it's so ridiculous to hear animals talking and planning and, and uh, doing what we do. 
And it is ridiculous because we necessarily think in a way different from the animals. A dog can eat the dog biscuit, and the dog cannot think this would taste better with salt on it, or I wish they would change the recipe and uh, send in a rec uh, some type of recommendation to Purina to change the recipe of the dog chow. The dog doesn't think like that. What is present to him is present to him. He doesn't think in terms of cause and effect. He doesn't think in terms of principle. He can't reason like that. You and I not only can do that, but we necessarily think that way. We necessarily think in a way that is totally unique in all of the universe, that no other living being that we know of thinks the way we do, or even can think that way. Mm -hmm. That shows that we have a, a spiritual soul that is not something that is just a machine or a function of material. We have something spiritual. You can conceive of things that took place thousands of years ago, but what is even more telling is that you can conceive of things that will take place a thousand years from now. Your mind is not tied to the matter in which you are living now. Your mind can transcend time. You can conceive of what is taking place, and scientists can calculate what is taking place on a star thousands of light years from here right now. No animal could even conceive of that. But we do it, and we do it almost routinely. It's because we're created in the image and likeness of God. Mm -hmm. We understand things. Are you saying then that the reasoning, are you identifying the reasoning powers of man with the soul? They are the function of the soul, absolutely. So the, the, it's not just a, a question of, of a higher molecular structure or of a more de developed brain that enables man to reason. It's this immaterial substance in him. Yes, no highly developed brain, if it were simply a material clump, could remove itself from time and remove itself from space. Any material thing is necessarily time-bound and space-bound. It is defined by uh, the, the matter which, which makes it up and which surrounds it. But our human minds, even the most primitive, uh, routinely skip days, years, uh, centuries mm -hmm. in thinking ahead mm -hmm. uh, in both directions, both the past and the present. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, we uh, skip across thousands of light years, billions and billions of miles. Mm -hmm. And we consider what is taking place there, what took place there thousands of years ago, and what will be taking place there millions of years from now. That is the function of a spiritual soul that is not enchained in matter mm -hmm. and not enchained in the moment. Mm -hmm. That shows the, uh, the fact that we are created in the image and likeness of God. Mm -hmm. Father, assuming now that, uh, let's accept your, your, your demonstration. Okay, so there's a necessary being. What can we know about this necessary being? What's he like? Well, we know he must be ordered. We know he must be extremely intelligent, infinitely intelligent. Remember, what we're talking about here is a mind so powerful that it can comprehend in an instant, in one thought, everything that is happening in his creation. We're talking a mind so powerful that he can comprehend the movement of every single atom, of every single electron, of every single, what they're now calling the quark, and the all of the structures that follow from these things, the vast uh, the solar systems, the galaxies, uh, in, in one thought. And, and everything that you and I are thinking, and that every human being is thinking now, or ever did think, or ever will think. Now that to you and to me is inconceivable. That is because God's mind is of a totally different order from yours and mine. His mind is infinitely powerful, and he can effortlessly uh, comprehend in an instant the entire history of the world. Hmm. What, uh, what more can we know about God? Is he good? Can we know that God is good? Yes, we know that he is good. How do we know this? We know that he is good from the world that he has created. Because as, as I say, we do find their order, and we find their beauty, and uh, we find, in fact, that the deviation from order and beauty is principally the result of ourselves. 
uh, that the disorder in creation comes from mankind. There we find hatred, and we find deceit, and we find envy, and lust, and gluttony, and all the rest. Um, <clears throat> but outside of our own existence in the world, we find uh, order and beauty. Now, I'm not saying that uh, nature, uh, you know, who was it who said nature uh, read of tooth and claw, right? Hmm. But, uh, uh, but nonetheless, we find there a very definite order. What about earthquakes? I mean, is this, does this show order? Absolutely, it does. <coughs> earthquakes uh, can create new, what they call, ecological systems. And even out of the ruins of an earthquake or a volcano, we find uh, life springing anew. And again, according to a very definite order. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the disasters that go, though, according to our faith, which we uh, uh, first find in the book of Genesis, right, in, in sacred scripture, we find that there was a garden of Eden, or paradise, in which there were no natural disasters. Uh, a garden prepared for human beings who are created in grace. And that only after man defied God was that order in the world shattered. And it was shattered by a will of man, not by the will of God. And uh, that brought into the world the disasters which we experience, in which we suffer. What, uh, what prompted God to create? Why did he create the universe? Why did he create man? There's a principle in theology, uh, bonum est diffusivum sui, which means goodness tends to diffuse itself, to share itself. We see that even in this world, in this corrupt world. We see that goodness tries to share itself, to spread itself. And so it is with God, who did not need the world for his glory, nonetheless created us as an expression of his glory and his goodness. Why did, uh, why did he create man? How, how is man an expression of his goodness? If we look around and we see the suffering, the evil, the crimes, how can man be? Well, he did not create man to be this way. Okay? God created man to be the, the image of him in this world. Um, but man chose his own pride and uh, to rebel from God, to say, no, I will be my own God. Mm -hmm. And so it is with atheists today that you'll find atheism is not so much an act of the intelligence as an act of the will. The atheist says, no, I am convinced intellectually there is no God. The atheist says, or what he should say is, I will that there is no God. And so for me, there will be no God. And he sets himself up, therefore, as his own God. And he will decide for himself, then, what is right and wrong. Mm -hmm. He won't accept any right or wrong that is imposed upon him from outside. Is there ever associated, or would the Catholic Church impute to the atheist maliciousness? Would it be sinful to be an atheist? Only if the atheists were insane. Because uh, the belief in God is rational. It is reasonable. The denial of God's existence is irrational. Right? It is unreasonable. And therefore, an insane person could deny the existence of God. If a sane person denied the existence of God, the church would teach there must be some malice. In other words, it gets back to what I was saying a minute ago. The, the sane person who denies the existence of God must do it not out of intelligence, but because of an act of the will that he wants there to be no God. He doesn't want there to be a God because the idea of God makes him uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he is morally responsible, and he will be condemned for that. Mm -hmm. uh, Father, you've mentioned certain things which we could know from the light of reason, the existence of God, that he is good, what about the existence of other creatures, such as the angelic natures? Can we know that from the light of reason? Can we know the existence of other creatures in the light of reason? Yes, we can. Angelic creatures? Yes, we can see a hierarchy in creation. I mean, we see the raw material creation and then the elementary forms of life coming up all the way to ourselves. And we can know the existence of God by the light of reason. But we are a mixture of soul and body, 
spirit and matter. And we can reasonably expect that between us and God, there are still intermediary forms of, of beings that exist who are uh, pure spirit, like the angels. We wouldn't know for sure that they do exist, but that there's a possibility for their existence. It would be very reasonable to, uh, to believe in their existence, yes. Why, why are our times so atheistic? It, uh, to play the protagonist here, uh, it seems that as modern science, or science has made tremendous progress, that this has uh, been paralleled by a progress in atheism. In other words, atheism seems to have a much greater hold on the world. In fact, there are even uh, social systems which are militantly atheistic and, in fact, enforce atheism, such as communism. What's your explanation for that? Because it would seem to say that uh, when darkness was lifted from the world and man was enlightened, he became an atheist. When he didn't know anything, then he believed. Well, here we are in the post-enlightenment age when man finally discovered the power of their own reason. And it is during this age that we see the great world wars. And thousands and thousands of people killed and millions in parallel, in peril because of the technology that we have. And we consider this to be the result of our own enlightenment. Mm -hmm. The reason given for the advance of atheism is often the increase in human knowledge and uh, the growth of science. That's a lie. There has been the growth of pseudoscience, phony science, which is mostly the result of philosophers, so-called not scientists. Uh, Huxley said of Darwin that Darwin's great contribution was to make God unnecessary. That is not the, the word of science. That is the word of a phony philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, science has nothing to do with it. True scientists know there is order, and therefore there is God. Mm -hmm. um, I think the real reason for the growth of atheism, though, is the human pride that is finally, by the technology that we've gotten through science, enables us to rebel against God and to decide that we're going to set up our own system. And there you have the institutionalized system of like atheistic communism, which has the power uh, to enforce itself upon whole populations and to monitor their thoughts and to, uh, to seize the power uh, not only over their public lives, but even their private lives. There you have a very devilish system which thinks that it can finally impose atheism by force and by the force of technology that science has given it. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned one interesting thing, uh, namely Huxley and Darwin. And uh, atheists seem to like Darwin very much. Uh, that they seem to uh, see in Darwin's theory the, the, the supremacy of chance, of blind chance, that it just happened. No one knows, it just happened. There's no design. What's the, uh, the Catholic belief in, in Darwin's theory of evolution? Well, the Catholic belief in the theory of evolution is that, is that the soul could not have evolved, that man has a soul and he's not the product of blind evolutionary forces, and therefore the uh, evolutionary teaching of Darwin must be totally rejected mm -hmm. as contrary to divine revolution, uh, revelation and even contrary to reason. Mm -hmm. uh, Darwin, If Darwin's real attempt was to make God unnecessary, then uh, his theories were diabolical. Mm -hmm. um, as far as uh, evolution within a species, we see evidence of that, but one species suddenly turning into another. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. And there's no evidence of that in the fossil record either, of this slow progress of evolution, of this gradual change in, in species. No evidence of it whatsoever. It is, that is truly faith, mm -hmm. not based on reason. Mm -hmm. You know, atheism is kind of chick nowadays. People find that it's, uh, it's kind of a status symbol to say, I'm an atheist. And they, everyone is supposed to say, oh, well, here's an independent thinker who obviously has penetrated deeply into the realities of the world. And uh, they're supposed to be extremely wise people. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, we have people doing very strange things today for the sake of distinguishing themselves from the common mass of humanity. We have people dyeing their hair orange and, and molding their hair into spikes. 
We have people biting the heads off of birds on stage. Uh, we have people making all kinds of peculiar noises from, uh, from stage and calling it entertainment, so there's nothing but sound effects. This seems to be the spirit of the age. And atheism is also the spirit of the age. It's a spirit of rebellion, uh, a spirit of, of contempt, almost a spirit of mockery of any, of any standard of right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, atheism is not the result of the human intelligence. The human intelligence tells us there's a God. It's the human will that stands up in rebellion and says, I will not have a God. Mm -hmm. that, is the, that is the seed of modern atheism, both personal and institutional. Father, the, the last question we have time for is this. Uh, uh, Darwin says there must be evolution. The church says, and reason says, that the soul could not have evolved. Would that mean, then, that man is no more intelligent today than he was 2,000, 3,000 years ago? That means, while man has a lot of facts to with which to think today, and a lot of experiences that men f formerly would not, would not consider, men in former days had every bit as much of raw intelligence as men today. The invention of the wheel took every bit as much intelligence today as the invention of the computer. Father, uh, thank you very much for being with us. Our guest